if I want early to bed, early to rise, it's a good thing I got up early when that water heater burst. And it's a good thing we were in town. You know, things can always be a lot worse. I could have come home to a submerged house. So. Well, we appreciate uh, David. We appreciate Leona finding singers. I said, you know, it's probably going to be hard to find somebody for New Year's to sing. Is there anyone you can ask? She said David would. So appreciate that. Well, it's been a tough month. December, very, very difficult. Um, we, we couldn't get to my family's memorial service. They combined my sister and brother-in-law into one service. So they asked me to write a letter, you know, a short letter. And I was going to read it to you now. Because one thing about New Year's and resolution is to let the people that you love let them know how much you appreciate them. My sister, it reminded me of that James Taylor song, Sweet Baby James. I always thought that I would see you again. Now I know I will in heaven, but it's the finality that hits you. And so I wrote that. This was to my niece and my nephew. It's hard to put into words just how much I loved my sister Jenny and her dedicated husband George. She and I shared a history of 70 years. Some wonderful, joyous times, some very, very tough times as well. She gave me a plaque that hangs in my home in Texas that reads, my brother by birth, my friend by choice. And that says it all. My brother-in-law George is one of the finest men I have ever met. It was a lot of fun to be with. His dedication to my sister through her illnesses and surgery was exemplary, and I loved him for it. We were not only family, but we enjoyed each other's company, traveling, gaming, eating a lot, laughing, and sharing the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We also wept over our sister Vicky's premature death, our parents' demise, and other family members passing, passing both ours and George's. Growing up together, we were very competitive, as could be seen by us still playing marathon scrabble games for money or betting the giants and the cowboy football games the last card i sent her had a 20 dollars bill in it because the cowboys didn't cover the spread the family reunions at their home were legendary and a terrific time but the reunion we will have one day in heaven will be extraordinary we will miss you until then, our sister and brother. And that's from Donna and I. Uh, Donna loved them both, too. We get along very, very well. We, uh, we all need a little levity right now. There's too much going on. And... Uh, I was asked if I had made any New Year's resolutions like Donna. And first, Jeff, what is a New Year's resolution? Well, it's something that goes in one year and out the other. My New Year's resolution is to stop hanging out with people who ask me about my New Year's resolution. I was going to quit all my bad habits for the New Year. But then I remember, nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> and a couple of nice thoughts from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. I don't know if anybody's read any of his works. 
but one ought every day at least to hear a little song, read a good poem, see a beautiful picture, and if it were possible to speak a few reasonable words. Happiness was always important to me, even at a young age. This is from that great theologian, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> Happiness was always important to me, even at a young age. People would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd tell them, I just want to be happy. Good point. And uh, this is a very important thought for New Year's. Only put, this is from Picasso, only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die left undone. And that means contacting people that you love. And then this poet. I hope you realize that every day is a fresh start for you. That every sunrise is a new chapter in your life waiting to be written. And then my, one of my favorite Christian authors, C.S. Lewis, there are far better things ahead than any we leave behind. Far better things ahead. And then Emil sent me some of these thoughts. Emil always sends me some pretty good stuff, especially while he's watching Notre Dame. <laughs> a cold seat in a public restroom is unpleasant. A warm seat in a public restroom is worse. <laughs> Appar <laughs> Apparently an RSVP to a wedding invitation Maybe next time isn't the correct response. <laughs> and this is for Jim Polk. <laughs> Don't irritate old people. <laughs> the older we get, the less life in prison is a deterrent. <laughs> uh, and for, Sharon, this is for you. Confuse your doctor by putting on rubber gloves at the same time he does. <laughs> My wife asked me to take her to one of those restaurants where they make the food right in front of you. I took her to Subway. <laughs> and then finally, I picked up a hitchhiker, and he asked if I wasn't afraid that he might be a serial killer. I told him the odds of two serial killers being in the same car was very unlikely. <laughs> Some good stuff. Well, if you take your outline, this actually is a very good lesson for today. Oh, uh, last week we studied how Solomon built the temple. The first temple spent seven years building it. And what we learned, things seem to go well when we obey God's commandments and instructions, study the Bible to be approved. Hiram and the Phoenicians were successful craftsmen and merchants, but were also pagans. Hiram loved David, then he loved Solomon, but he was a pagan. God can and will use non-believers to accomplish his will. And I think about King Cyrus, who sent the people back and paid for them to rebuild their city. He was a Persian king. And then the temple wasn't huge, but it was ornate. It was 90 feet long. 30 feet wide, 40, 45 feet high. And while the tabernacle was portable, the temple was to be permanent, like God's ordinances. And then praying for the nation. <laughs> I, I hate to get too political. 
it should but, read it should read the vacationing Joe Biden. Oh yeah, he's uh, <laughs> out on St. Croix while people are freezing their bones off. Uh, but uh, they say pray for your leaders because God can change a king's heart just like a river of water, even if you don't care for him. And then the great state of Alabama, which just passed open carry. You don't need a gun permit to uh, carry a pistol. And then the scripture, blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people. We're going to study this today. This is Solomon's prayer, one of the great prayers in all the Bible. Now, chapter 7, I only put one verse because it's a construction chapter. Solomon, seven years, built the temple, did a fabulous job, encased in gold, just a beautiful facility. Next, he built his house, the palace, and he spent 13 years building that. So for 20 years, Solomon was basically in a building mode. And uh, it took him 13 years, I think, probably because he was tired after the seven years building the temple. And then the ark brought to the temple. Now, Solomon assembled the elders and leaders of Israel. He put all the key people together that they could move into the temple from the tabernacle and move everything up. And they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord. From the city of David, which is Zion. Now, I mentioned before, the city of David 40 times in the Old Testament is mentioned as the city of David as Jerusalem because David conquered it and he basically founded it. And if you remember back when we studied 2 Samuel in chapter uh, Five verses six and seven. David's conquering the land, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem to the Jebusites. The Jebusites were the inhabitants of the land, which spoke to David, saying, Hey, our city is so fortified, you we could defend it with just the lame, the blind, and the halt. Except you take away the blind and the lame. You're not coming in here, David. Don't think you can capture this. David cannot come. Verse 7. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That was the original name the Jebusites called Jerusalem. And the same is the city of David. So Zion's an interesting word. You've probably heard it. A lot of athletes are naming their kids Zion. Uh, I've got Zion Williams's rookie card, the basketball player. But uh, I did a little research on that. And Zion, the name of Jerusalem, was also the name of the Temple Mount. But it was expanded. And it was expanded to uh, account for the whole nation of Israel. And then futuristic Zionists, they see Zion of the heavenly city of God on earth. So it's got a lot of meanings. And I looked up First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 6. And uh, Peter is quoting here Isaiah, uh, chapter 28, uh, verse 16. And he said, or 6, excuse 16, yes. Wherefore it is also contained in the scripture, he's quoting Isaiah, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, Christ, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believes on him shall not be ashamed. <clears throat> so Zion's got a lot of meaning. But you'll hear it mostly talking about Jerusalem. 
Therefore, all the men assembled, and he's going to have a big feast. This is the Feast of the Tabernacles. And the priests took up the ark. They took it the way you're supposed to with staves, carrying it from the tabernacle up to the temple. And they were ahead of the priests, sacrificing sheep and oxen as they made this procession to the temple. They're just slaying all these animals that they're going to use for the feast, by the way. They don't waste food. And the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, the Holy of Holies, under the wings of the cherubim, two 15-foot tall cherubim are at the entrance to the Holy of Holies. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the poles could be seen from the holy place in the front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside. And they're there to this day, well, the day that he was writing this. Now, this is interesting. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone, which Moses put in there at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, <clears throat> originally it had Aaron's rod that budded, and it had manna. That was 500 years ago. So the manna and the rod were taken out of the ark, just the two tablets of stone. And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. This cloud is the Shekinah glory of God. And it filled the house that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now, the Shekinah glory of God is a visible manifestation of of the Lord God Almighty. Now, it says in Scripture that a human being cannot look at the glorified God. It's too overwhelming. Moses wanted to. God gave him a glimpse. But he appears in forms that man can endure. For example, the burning bush. That's the Shekinah glory of God. The pillar of fire by day in the exodus and the cloud or by night and the cloud by the day. That's the Shekinah glory. And then the ultimate glory is Jesus Christ. Because it says all of the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in human form. He was God come in the flesh so that people could endure dealing and handling him and so that's going to be interesting for us one day when we have glorified bodies and we can see god we can't take it now but we'll take it then and then page four the lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud and Solomon, I have built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell as long as you want forever. And then Solomon's speech at the end of the work. After seven years, he turned to all the leaders and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who spoke with his mouth to my father David. And his hand has fulfilled it, saying, since the day that I brought my people out of Egypt, I have chosen no city, any tribe in Israel to build me a house that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now, it was in the heart of my fault, David, this is Solomon speaking, to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. 
But the Lord said to my father, Whereas in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well to have that in your heart. Your motive was pure. Nevertheless, you are not going to build this temple. But your son, who will come after you, he will build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word which he spoke, and I have filled the position of my father David to sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. And I have built the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have made a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, the blessed Ten Commandments. I remember writing the newspaper, people were talking about crime and school and the degradation. I said, my suggestion is you post the Ten Commandments everywhere. Children don't have virtually any input on what God has ordained. So, you think they published that letter? No. <laughs> no. Now, this Solomon's prayer of dedication is one of the greatest prayers in all the Bible. And it's very applicable to us today. And Solomon is at the height of his spiritual walk. He is on fire for God. Unfortunately, as we'll study next week, he starts getting too rich. Now, there's nothing wrong with money, nothing wrong with having it. But Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You can either serve God or you can serve well. And unfortunately, Solomon is going to make some poor decisions. He's going to have 700 wives. He had an eye like David for pretty women. No doubt about it. Seven, I, can hear, I can barely handle one. 700 and 300 concubines on top of that. He had a, he had a harem and they lead him astray. I saw where the head of the Taliban said, I wish that God had never made women. <laughs> I, said, no. I said, well, you would have had a tough time uh, being here. Yeah, They're crazy. They're crazy. All right, Solomon's prayer. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the assembly and spread out his hands toward heaven and starts praying. He said, Lord God of Israel, there is no one in heaven above or on earth below like you. He starts with praise. Who keep your covenants and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all, your, all their hearts. You have kept what you have promised. Your servant David, my father, you have both spoken it and fulfilled it. You have answered our prayer this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised. Your servant David, my father, is saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if. Whenever you read the Bible, there is only if or but mention there is going to be a condition. Only if your sons take heed in their way that they walk before me, as you have walked before me so far. And now I pray, O God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken. But will God dwell on the earth? Is God going to live in this temple? He answers this, Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain God. He is infinite. How much less this temple that I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication. Please hear my prayer. Which your servant is praying before you today. That your eyes may be open toward this temple night and day. Please keep an eye on this temple. When we need you, we want to be able to reach you. My name shall be there that you may hear the prayer of your servant toward this place. You may hear the supplication of your servant and your 
people of Israel, when they play towards this place, here in heaven, Lord, your dwelling place, make this a direct connection to you, that holy of holies and to you. When anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath, and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, so when there's a dispute, then here in heaven and earth, judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Back then it was who was going to do the right thing, but I wrote in my Bible, Christ is now our righteousness. We can't be good enough. We can't be good enough. We have to take on his righteousness. And when your people, Israel, are defeated by an enemy, and they have sinned against you, but when they repent and turn back and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you, then you hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back restore them which he did over and over I wish Jack was here when the heavens are shut up and there's no rain because they have sinned against you and when they pray towards this temple and confess you and turn from their sin then you hear and heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and send rain on your land which you have given to your people he's going to address every problem they're going to face in the future when there is famine in the land pestilence like covid or blight or mildew locusts when enemies besiege the land whatever plague of sickness there is Whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone and by all your people, Israel, he wants corporate prayer, all of us agreeing to hear this prayer. When each man knows the plague of his own heart, that's your personal sin. When you can recognize what you have fallen short of and you work to ask for forgiveness God will hear from heaven and give to everyone whose heart you know for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men man looks on the outward appearance God looks on the heart and that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers now Fear is all-encompassing of love, respect, and obedience. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Jesus said, fear the one who can take the body and the soul, not just men who can take you physically. Moreover, this is good. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, hey, somebody... A tourist coming to Israel who is not a Jew but has come from a country because he heard of you and he wants to know more about you for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and your outstretched arm and when he comes and prays towards this temple here in heaven your dwelling place and do a call according to all which the foreigner prays for even the Gentiles, as the people of Israel, that they may know that this temple for which I have built is called by your name. The Lord and Solomon wanted Israel to be a light to all nations. His plan for Israel was to evangelize the entire earth in his name. And of course, he did that through Christ, but he's wanting this right now. And when your people go to battle and they're going to war, please, here in heaven, 
hear their prayers, prayer changes things, and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, Solomon's pretty wise here. He said the wisest man that ever lived, besides Jesus. For there is no one who does not sin. Everyone commits sin. And you become angry. And deliver them over to be captive with their enemy. And they come where they are carried away. So when they get carried away to Babylon. But they repent and make supplication to you. Even while they're taken prisoner. And they confess we have sinned and done wrong. And we have committed wickedness. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul, Jesus said the first command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. In the land of their enemies who led them away and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, in the city you have chosen and the temple I have built for your name, then here in heaven and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions which they have transgressed and grant them compassion that they may have compassion on them. Those that took them captive would let them go. For they are your people, your inheritance, and you brought them out of Egypt. And your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant. Please listen when they pray. For you separated them from among the peoples of the earth. To be your inheritance. As you spoke by your servant Moses. And when you brought our fathers out of Egypt. O oh Lord God. Through Israel. God wanted all the world to be saved. Solomon blesses the assembly. So he just prayed this prayer. Now he's going to bless the crowd. When he had finished praying, he was on his knees with his hands toward heaven. Again, this was the height of Solomon's walk with God. And he stood and blessed the assembly. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, who's given rest to his people. <clears throat> there has not failed one word of his good promise that he made to Moses. May the Lord our God be with us, as he was with our Father. May he not leave us nor forsake us, pray without ceasing, always having that awareness of God in all situations that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments. And may these words of mine, which I have made supplication to the Lord, be near the Lord God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is no other. And then he dedicates, and this is one heck of a dedication. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered peace offerings. 22,000 bulls. That's a lot of bulls. And 120,000 sheep. That's a lot of lamb chops. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On the same day, the king consecrated the front porch, the middle front court, because he had so much barbecue going on here for burnt offerings, he needed more space. Because the one inside the temple wasn't big enough. And he made grain offerings and the fat of peace offerings. He built a second altar. And Solomon held the feast. This is the feast of the tabernacles. Commemorating the 40 years they lived in the wilderness. 
and all Israel with him, a great assembly of Hamlet to the brook of Egypt. So it was a huge celebration. Before the Lord God, seven days. And he said, hey, this is going so well. Seven more days. We're going to have a two-week festival here. Fourteen days. And on the eighth day, he said, look, you guys need to go home, man. I'm tired. But he gave them plenty of this food and uh, everything that they were celebrating with to take home. And I love this last sentence. It says, they blessed the king. Wouldn't you like to have a leader like this? And went to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David and Solomon and for Israel, his people. These were happy days. This was a joyous time. That's going to change. But next week, we're going to study God's response to Solomon's prayer. It's uh, very interesting. And then what we learn. The new year is a time of reflection and appreciation for God's blessings and for our loved ones. God is a God of new beginnings, starting with the new birth. As the newly built temple was to be a light to all nations as described in Mark eleven seventeen. We now are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Born again believers have the Holy Spirit and we should be salt and light to whoever we come in contact with. Let them see the love of God in your daily life. Gary Kenner always said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. And Solomon's prayer reflects the way all believers should function in their relationship with the Lord. Following his commandments results in fellowship with the Father. He will forgive sin if repentance occurs and we turn back to him. So Solomon said, all people sin. Turn back. He's only one step away. Turning back. So, that's our lesson for today. We'll open it up uh, for questions, comments. Yes. You had mentioned the Shekinah glory. Yes. That was when we studied uh, Moses coming down and he was covered with it. So he, he had seen the burning bush and he was so, radiant. Yeah, he was so radiating. That was the result of the yes. seeing the burning okay. Yes. Donna. So they started shooting cops. Yeah. How pagan is that? Wouldn't it have been great if someone had said a prayer of giving God glory of a million people? And instead they were preaching. It's become very hedonistic, unfortunately. I don't know if you read, there was a rookie policeman, 19 years old. He, first night, and he was macheted in the head from some criminal. Last night. Huh? Last night? Yeah. Yeah, Times Square. And some other one was attacked. They caught him. He had a uh, paper machete with three different policemen. Oh, one in the head. Well, a 19 year his first night on the job. He was a rookie. It's no doubt the spirit of Antichrist is loose in America. And it's because we've turned away. I, I love watching Jonathan Cobb. <clears throat> explain what's happening today in America versus what happened in the history of Israel. It is so relevant and so accurate of how things unfolded for the people when they turned away from God and they worshiped false gods. You know, and when they showed that Times Square thing at midnight, they showed men kissing men and women kissing women. They focused on those couples show on the television screen. I'm glad I fell asleep. That's why I went to bed at 9 o'clock. <laughs> well, you know, Lego, which is a favorite children's toy, they're making a special set, you know, with with a groomer in it, you know, like for, um, 
LGBT, one little figure said a bloomer. Huh. Well, um, Jonathan Kama is talking about the worship of Ashtaroth, which we'll get into in the next week or two. Um, that is the female goddess of sexuality. And her big thing was homosexuality and transgenderism. Now, this is thousands of years ago. But he said these ancient false gods are taking root in our culture today. Moloch. Yeah, Moloch sacrificing the children. He was also called a destroyer. So oh. it's uh, pray for America, pray for your family, spend time with those that you love and want to may not see again. You never know. So and pray for Boston. If you read, they have the largest Satanism um, convocation. I mean, like a get together in, in Boston, the largest in history. Well, that's far cry from the Tea Party. <laughs> in Boston. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new year. I pray for revival in our land, Lord, but it starts with us. May we keep our eyes focused on you. May we spend time in your word, time with fellowship with believers, encouraging the law, helping the poor, being kind and considerate, and I just ask that you would bless each person here today and those watching on our YouTube channel, Lord. I pray that you would give them the gift of the anointing of your Holy Spirit and the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. We love you. We worship. We praise you in Christ's holy name. Amen. Well, have a nice year. We'll see you next week. I